Vijayamrit Raj is no stranger to tennis epics, having played and covered most of the big matches in the sport over the last 50 years. And he joins us bright and early from Los Angeles. Uh, at the outset, Vijay, I apologize if it felt like I was calling you old, but uh, what we saw Sunday afternoon and uh, evening must go down as one of the greatest Grand Slam finals of all time. Yes, I mean, we've been very fortunate to have seen players of this caliber play each other for uh, many, many years now, a couple of decades, I should say, when these three guys, Djokovic, Federer and Nadal, gave us those quality matches, and including the Roddick final at Wimbledon. So we've seen a lot of great finals, great matches at Grand Slams, and these guys have all been uh, warriors in their own way and playing four and five set matches that are four and five hours long. It's, it's just been magnificent to watch and be a part of it. Yes, you could add that Djokovic uh, Federer final from Wimbledon a few years back or even uh, Nadal Djokovic from 2012. But Vijay, you've seen a fair bit of tennis. You've played Rod Lever and commented on the big three. Now, Rod Lever was sitting on court through that men's singles final. And, and really, we all just have to applaud the contest that uh, Nadal and Daniel Medvedev put up. Yes, I mean, I think uh, the fitness always comes into question and all these guys are extraordinarily fit now to be able to do these kinds of uh, incredible matches. But uh, the good news is that, you know, they get days off in between over a 14-day period of playing seven matches. The question is how quickly a body recovers. You hope that in the first week you don't have many five-set matches which can drain you to the second week. So I think these things matter a lot. But at the end of the day, you can see what it means to uh, every single one of these top champions who can come out, give it their best, and when things get difficult, they find a way to get out of it. I'm going to get you in on the burning question, you know, the burning story, the burning headline that there's always been this debate about the greatest of all time, especially in men's singles, and each one of Federer, Nadal and Djokovic have put up their claims. But to use a tennis term, is it advantage Nadal now, Vijay, in the race uh, on the back of what he pulled off on Sunday? Well, you know what? Frankly, it doesn't really matter because all these three guys have been chasing history now for quite some time. And uh, it's incredible, you know, for so many decades, we've not had one player get to this many majors in his career. And uh, all of a sudden, in one uh, era, you have three guys who had reached 20. That's just unimaginable to even think that. When I was playing during the Connors Borg era and then McEnroe came along, you know, for, Ma for Borg to win six French championships was so unimaginable that he could come out and do that or five Wimbledons. You know, I always said this and during my lifetime, I wouldn't see anyone beat Bjorn's record. And look what's happened. So now we've got three guys who came into 20 and going into this match, going into this tournament rather, we had Djokovic coming in there possibly as the favourite, uh, had he played. But now you have Nadal at 21 which is, uh, you know, these numbers are just staggering to even look at. But uh, at the end of the day, is he the greatest of all time now just to share numbers alone? You know, there has to be a debate, but I think you'd have to give it to him, wouldn't you? That's big coming from you, Vijay. As you've always maintained that Rod Lever has to be in the conversation for winning the calendar slam twice. Now, Nadal, he's always been about grit and tenacity, Vijay, but 10 years older, just back from a long layoff and still finding the mental belief to come back from two sets down for the first time. Actually, check this. The first time he's won from two sets to love down since beating Mikhail Yuzny in 2007. Well, we've always known that Nadal is a great fighter. And just to correct myself, if you want to do that or, or, or correct what I was saying, when I say greatest of all time, you know, I always keep, keep laboring. <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> in there because of the two Grand Slams that he won, the actual Grand Slams, as it was coined, winning the four majors in the same calendar year. And he won it in 62 and 69. And uh, needless to say, op when tennis went open in 68, he won it again in 69. So I always put labor up there. But at the end of the day, when you look at someone like Rafa and Roger and Djokovic, I put them all kind of in the same category. Rafa coming back from two sets to lockdown, <coughs> He's never out of the match. He's never, all these three guys for that matter, they've all played amazing fifth sets. And that's why they are such great champions. And when you look at the way Rafa 
coming back after losing the second set in the tiebreak, mind you, to be able to come back. And then I think he might have even served for the match in the fifth set and then dropping it and then winning again. It, it's just overwhelming to see because not just the physical aspect of it, but the mental aspect of it. Yes, that mental aspect has proved very crucial for the big three. But Vijay, you know the man, you know the competitor in him. He has maintained through this tournament that uh, he wasn't looking at the 21st, but more of a chance to win the Australian Open for just the second time. This is going to fire him up even more to win more and more slams and perhaps stretch that gap to his great rivals. Yes, I mean, uh, he's had a break, no question. And uh, Rafa Nadal, when you look at him itself and the way he starts off a match, you look at him and you think it's got entirely to do with work. Work, work and work. You don't think of talent, you don't think of grace, you don't think of uh, any of the skills and so on. You think about, look at Rafa and you think, my goodness, anyone who works this hard or looks this fit or this athletic on the court you know, has to have put everything into his practice and his fitness. And that's exactly what he's done. So he's very focused on that. So when he comes out there in the fifth set, he wants to be the better of the two players constantly, like the great Roy Emerson was way back in the 60s. If it goes five sets, he was in the driver's seat. So I think when you look at someone like Rafa, and uh, I go all the way back to 16 years old when he was 16, and we gave him, a, I think, a wild card to play in the Chennai Open. And uh, made his debut there. I think he might have even won the doubles at the Chennai Open, 16 or 17 years old. And we knew at that point in time that this guy is going to be a fitness fitness uh, demon. And uh, that's what he turned himself into. And you see him playing. And he works so much harder than his opponent. And uh, playing well behind the baseline. So he needs to run more. I think he even runs more over a period of the two weeks or uh, seven matches than any one of his opponents. You brought up the Chennai Open. I do remember uh, Rafa Nadal trying his hand at cricket along with uh, Krish Srikanth and you. But just the other big story uh, around this Australian Open was the situation involving Novak Djokovic. Now, Vijay, what do you make of the entire situation that unfolded ahead of the tournament? Well, it's a great pity the way uh, it turned out because all obviously we want to see the best players in the tournament at every event. And that's the whole idea of the Grand Slams and the, and the Masters 1000. So I think you look at look at what happened and how it was played out and handled and so on and so forth. You know, we all understand the importance of it, and, but the, the 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 freedom of choice and all of that. But at the end of the day, country comes first, sport comes second. It's always been that way. And the country has to make decisions that are in their best interest of its own citizens. And I think when you look back at our 74 Davis Cup in South Africa, when the government made the decision to default in, uh, uh, in protest against apartheid. And I think the issue in 87, when we played against Israel and the government decided to play the match. So I think when we look at all these things, it's important to understand the importance of what sport can play. I always think sport is a great uh, uh, thing to overcome these kinds of barriers, which we can, as it is with music. And uh, this one got into a little bit of a, a mess uh, the week before, and that was really, really unfortunate. But uh, uh, at the end of the day, from a tennis perspective, sure, we miss all of the best players who do not participate. We certainly missed Federer. We certainly missed uh, uh, Djokovic uh, from a tennis perspective. But you have to go along with exactly what the what is important for the country hosting the event. I mean, that's an interesting take. But how does Novak Djokovic handle the fallout, Vijay? Because it's not just as simple as it sounds. He just can't turn up anywhere and play. There are larger implications to not having a COVID vaccine. As things stands, we are hearing he probably will not be allowed to play the French Open or even the US Open. But that's his choice though, isn't it, Diggy? If he chooses that's the way he would like to have it, then that's the way he would like to have it. It's very much his choice. Interesting. That's what Nadal says too as well, Vijay. Interesting. That's that's a very interesting way of looking yeah. at it. Yeah. 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 But it, it is you gotta you got to you gotta go with the choices you make. And you know the lay of the land. When you're practicing on a court, you make choices to practice for that particular tournament because you know the court's surface, you know the speed of it, 
So you try to find something that is close enough to that court in your home country so that you can actually practice on it and work towards playing well at the Australian Open, which is why you want extra weeks uh, on grass before you play Wimbledon, because you really want to focus and practice on the grass. Those are the choices you make. I mean, you can, you can stay home and not do anything or not practice on the grass like Bjorn Borg did and still win. But that's your choice. So you make your choice and uh, what is the best for you as a, as a player and as an individual. We still don't know how that one is going to develop because we'll probably have to wait for Djokovic to land in Dubai. He's entered that tournament coming up in February. But uh, Vijay, moving on, how would you look back at this Australian Open and what does it tell you about the next generation and the fight to unseat the big three? There was just one man out there, that was Nadal, and he ended up flying the flag for the big three. No, as a matter of fact, it's getting tighter and tighter, which is what the uh, <laughs> big three are always trying to hold off. And this is what's so great about these guys, you know, because for so long, they've been able to hold them off. First 10 years, it didn't matter because they were in most of the finals themselves. But the second 10 years, it's starting to get closer and closer and closer. And then you've got the Shapovalovs, you've got the Sitsa Passes, you've got the Medvedevs, you've got the Zverevs, and you've got a host of other guys uh, like Monfils and all, all those guys are still very much in the mix. Um, Felix, uh, so it's great to watch. This is this is the time for tennis because you're watching very closely the push and shove against these guys to uh, have, like when Medvedev crossed the hump and won the US Open. So it's a, it's a terrific time in tennis. Yes, a terrific time. But it was also a terrific time over in the women's singles because uh, Australia, which a proud sporting nation, uh, I've always uh, felt it over there, seen it how much they love their sport. And for Ashley Barty to end that uh, drought stretching back to 1978 must be so, so liberating. Yes, absolutely. I mean, uh, they are a spectacular sporting nation, Australia, in all, in all sports for that matter. And uh, I, I just absolutely love the way Ash Barty plays tennis. She is a, a brilliant talent. She is a spectacular competitor. She fights hard. Her behavior is absolutely perfect. The, the style of play is majestic. <laughs> I, I can't say enough nice things about uh, Ash Barty. And she's uh, the way she conducts herself, her demeanor on court, her demeanor off court, um, her speeches afterwards, uh, the, the, her posts when she posts on social media, all of these things, she's uh, uh, as good as they come. And I think she's a terrific asset, not just to women's tennis, and not just to tennis as a whole, but for sport in general and for Australia as a country. You're just seeing some uh, champagne celebrations, but I also need to throw in another champagne celebration. This is the one about the special case. That was uh, one wild ride, uh, Vijay, for Nick Kyrgios and Thanasi Kokinakis to win the doubles title. Not your usual champions, but then who's, who's complaining? Another win for Australia. Well, <laughs> that's a different conversation altogether. But at the end of the day, you know, uh, during my days, in the first decade, we had uh, the great Ilya Nastasi. I never saw anyone as talented as the way Nastasi played. But uh, he was an uh, entertainer. He, was, uh, he said everything that you shouldn't. He said it at the oddest moments. He, he behaved strangely in a sport that was, uh, didn't uh, tolerate bad behavior, and, uh, but everyone came out to watch him, and he was majestic to watch because his talent was so amazing. And uh, then came McEnroe. McEnroe did it in a different way, and, and Connors, and uh, behavior was not the priority here at this point in time and how you represented something. But you watched them play, and they were just superb athletes and tennis players, McEnroe and Connors, and you can't say enough nice things about the way these guys played the game. So today you have uh, Kyrgios and Kokonakis and, and a whole host of others who will come after them and uh, who look at what juniors think is acceptable. And, uh, you know, you're going to have those interesting moments. But at the same time, I think uh, I've always said this, and there is a way that uh, you represent your country 
and uh, make sure that you uh, wear that flag first uh, on top of your forehead. And, uh, and as long as that is carried well, um, you're fine. Well, let's just head back to the women's game because the women's game has been very topsy-turvy last four or five years ever since sort of 2016 when uh, we've seen things go up and down and Naomi Osaka only won to win back-to-back -back slam. She's not done it not once but she's done it twice. But do you now think that Ashley Barty is the new Serena? The, new, the player who sort of will dominate the women's game for the next three to four years? No, I don't think uh, that that's that's really that, that's very hard to do what Serena Williams has achieved over the Williams sisters for that matter. Uh, I think uh, to win that many Grand Slam singles titles over a career and be so such a dominant factor, uh, it, it's it's certainly certainly impossible to achieve. Impossible. I'm using it loosely, but. I think that the, the good thing about women's tennis uh, is the fact that you're going to see a variety of champions coming along. And uh, though Ash Barty today is clearly the favorite, when she gets to clay, there'll be a lot more players who can challenge her. At grass, I think she'll be the favorite, so as she will be at the US Open. But things can happen. Desire, work ethic, um, injury, uh, all of those things, uh, other interests, all of those things could come into play as well as you move forward. To have that single-minded focus like when you see Nadal doing it, it, it is hard to imagine for uh, uh, two decades. So I think when you look at women's tennis, the great thing about it is the fact that you see so many talented players having a chance to win a Grand Slam singles title. Yes, it's been a memorable ride over the last couple of years. But final thoughts, Vijay? Cracking into the Australian Open, but we have a big tennis season coming up that will perhaps answer a lot of questions like uh, a change of guard or... The old guard remaining eternals, to quote the recent movie. <laughs> well, it's going to be interesting to see because there's a, the biggest gap between the Grand Slams is uh, the Australian to the French. So uh, a, a lot can happen in a variety of uh, ways between uh, now and then. And we we'll see how Indian Wells and uh, Miami go, the two 1000s, before you get to the Middle East swing. And... Uh, and then get to and then get to Europe for the clay court season starting in April. So we'll have to wait and see. But at the end of the day, it's uh, you know Fedra is going to come back. When he comes back remains to be seen. How much time he requires from tournament play into tournament play is going to be uh, watched very carefully. Um, you're going to see all the others who have done so well at the Australian Open outside of the two finalists. You know how they perform in these upcoming tournaments. So, it's going to be a blend of all of these things that make a big difference by the time we get to the French. Okay. Vijayam Ritraj, as always, a pleasure to have you on the show and to hear that perspective. The pandemic has kept you away far too long from our TV screens, Vijay, but will you sort of find new ways of getting a hold of you thanks to technology? Yes. Yes, Nikki. That's wonderful. Great talking to you and all the best uh, to all the listeners, viewers and uh, all the sports fans and tennis fans in India.